So we are live. Welcome, everyone. Hey. So we have, I had to pause it, otherwise they can't hear us. <laughs> so I had, uh, so uh, welcome, everyone. We have a very special guest here in the house, as you can see, Steve Mitchell from the Mind of Watercolor. Hey, everybody. <laughs> and I'm going to let you introduce yourself in a second. I want to just uh, mention a while ago, I, uh, I posted a video asking what your biggest watercolor and art struggles are. Uh, so I thought it would be a great idea to have someone more experienced than I am and someone to bounce ideas off of. Uh, so thank you so much for being here, Steve. For the few sure. people that may not know who you are, uh, maybe you can give like a line to a paragraph. Um, yeah. Uh Steve Mitchell, Mind of Watercolor, a uh, YouTube channel on mostly just watercolor, some mixed media. Um, it's been going now on YouTube for, I guess, uh, come July, it'll be nine years. Um, was a, uh, was a professional graphic designer and illustrator for 35 years. And uh, long story, but that all just kind of fizzled out, and I wasn't enjoying it anymore. So this is what I wanted to do. And that brings us to where we are. So I'm primarily landscape. I do portraits too, but I, I do a lot of landscape on my channel, um, as most of my subscribers will tell you. And we just have fun. Not yep. much else to say. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing how life kind of goes in a way and you sometimes have to go with the flow, but it led us all here. And yeah. I'm, yeah. for one, I'm super grateful for uh, getting to know I mean, you and having... Yeah, having yeah. the opportunity to be exposed to your stuff. Sorry, do go I, on. I was just thinking how great this is. You know, you're where you are, I'm where I am, and how we can do this, you know, and collaborate. Uh, so many years, you know, when I was doing my freelance design, you know, I just sit in the studio alone, and, and these kind of technologies weren't available. So this is fantastic. It's yeah. so fun. Yeah, and I, I, honestly, I would love doing more of these. You know, the, the more you do it, the more casual in a way it becomes but then you can actually dive deeper into yeah. stuff that maybe you don't get to uh when it's more like formal and once in in a, in a while um i will add that if anyone wants to learn uh more about you i guess there is the interview we did a couple of years ago so feel free right if you want to right check that, out. that was a great and that was that was fun yeah yep yeah uh so i'm seeing a bunch of people in the chat we'll just say hi i see pam uh thank you so much for being here martin yeah, hi, pam. Paul, uh, yeah, you can see them too right uh sandra jill steve how are you uh yeah you said you're gonna you may not be able to uh be fully here but that's okay uh we're gonna leave this as always uh live stream open uh you can watch it after the fact uh judith nancy john how are you dazzling action laura uh, Julie, Luis, how are you doing? Betty, uh, everyone's here, so we can get the party started. Uh, and some people would probably trickle in. Um, so I basically compiled, um, I told you this a few moments ago, but for everyone here, um, I took a few comments that I feel like are very interesting because they're personal. And, and I love that something is personal. And then there are also a few recurring themes of uh, struggles with art, with watercolor. Um, I would like for me at least to approach this from the place of not necessarily telling people what to do. And I know you you have a similar approach, but more like a, a, an invitation to explore something maybe a little different, something yes. you haven't thought of. Um, some of it is going to be technical as well. I did try to focus a lot on things that are maybe beyond just uh, technical. Um, so we'll get started. I have a question by Andrew here first, and I'm going to read it. Uh, maybe it, it's a bit hard to read, uh, but in any case, I think it should be good. Um, thanks for the inspiration over the years. I'm a competent watercolorist. What I struggle with is getting away from just creating a photograph in paint. For me, what's not uh, that's not art, even though it requires skill. I've tried painting in a looser style. I don't like that term. It's very inaccurate. But that does not satisfy me. Maybe I'm overthinking this art stuff, Andrew. Um, so I'd actually love to hear your thoughts on this kind of a thing. Uh, it's an interesting place to be. Uh, yeah. But, yeah um yeah that's uh i think well i can't say everybody struggles with this but i did certainly for a long time and uh you know it's i i think it just all depends on what you want to do you know what you want to see how where you, i i kind of look at it this way to have an end target 
So maybe you're not satisfied with, uh, you know, photorealistic art or just recreating your photo. Well, what, what do you want to see? And go out and find those artists because they're out there. There's a whole range. There's every, everything from totally abstract to semi-abstract, semi-representational to, you know, stylized, representational to, you know, loose, mixed with highly representative. I mean, there's every style available. So my goal, my, my thought is always to look for the target that you're aiming for. And usually that's to find the artist that most embodies that and start studying you know their style and if if it's something you can can do i mean if they offer workshops and you can take one do it but uh if they have videos do that otherwise just study their pieces um and play you know uh the, one of the biggest themes on my channel is don't don't just paint paintings uh play with your mediums and nail down your skills and you will discover things if you wait till you're painting a full painting every time to discover things, you're wasting a lot of time because you'll paint full paintings, be dissatisfied and chuck them, and then go paint another painting, be dissatisfied and chuck it and say, what am I doing wrong? Well, you're not breaking it down. You're not problem solving. So you have to spend a lot of time, uh, in some cases, maybe more time playing uh, just spontaneously to see uh, maybe in a sketchbook Maybe you don't paint anything, you know, you're trying out a paint, a brush, a, a technique and uh, just you'll discover little things. You'll say, ah, that that could be useful here. Or, ah, here's something that I can do, you know, without just trying to paint something every time and not realizing why it's not working. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's a sufficient answer, but I love that. I love that because a lot of the play and exploration is something that removing all other useless stuff that's what we do naturally that's yeah. what people do and they discover what what's you know that's how new techniques are discovered that's how new approaches are discovered by play and, and accident and freedom um yes and it all connects to and one thing to go back to and, and uh, andrew mentions you know tried painting in a looser style even looking at predetermined styles to some extent i think limits your imagination because there is no you know predetermined style that andrew will paint with or using or, right. or you know that it's more of you find the thing within a thing that that is yours and even looking at you know abstract loose realistic yeah. that already limits your options maybe you fall somewhere completely different you know yeah um and i love even going back to what you said earlier i think there are two parts there is the discovering you may you don't even know and then there's the maybe honing or or walking the path that you discovered right right well I, and such a great point uh, i always say one of the things i love to say is you don't find your style your style finds you so um true. yeah it it and it can be little steps. And this is why playing is so important. If you're going from photorealistic to something a little more stylized, uh, a big pro a big challenge for me over the years was learning how to simplify. Learning how to simplify, you know, and not overstate everything. Because I've always been a realist. And, uh, you know, and I would simplify things or stylize things like that. No, it's just not working. So you you find those little individual things that make up the bigger goal, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. And I think everyone has a different way of seeing the simplification or the stylization. And a lot of just discovering it is is part of the fun, honestly. Because then it's something that you, that you almost created yourself, like the actual approach or the actual technique. And then it's something that, that stays with you and is something unique that pretty much only Very you true. yeah, only you know. And, and it's not like it's a secret or anything like that. But even if other people will learn it from you, they'll never use it the same way because it's yours uniquely. Very true. And I don't know if you, you see this, uh, Liron. I find that there's some guilt that goes around, along with hmm. maybe it's people who don't paint very often, but... Uh, for not sitting down and painting a serious finished painting. Yeah. There's, there's like some guilt goes along with, you know, I can't mess around, waste time 
experimenting and playing i gotta get i gotta get down to business and do something final you know something and usually that that comes from limited time you know you you're maybe art is that your full-time thing it's just something you do on the mm -hmm. side so when you have a little bit of time you think i don't have time to mess around i you know i gotta go for a full painting well in actuality in my theory <laughs> is that you're actually wasting more time by not you know, problem solving little skills, you know? Mm -hmm. And so you, when you're talking about going from realism to something that's looser and you're absolutely right, Lear, and loose is just such an imprecise term. Um, uh, when you go from something tight to something that's less tight, uh, that breaks down into steps, mm -hmm. you know, that breaks down into how do you do that? You know, it's not just a style it's there are little things it's like uh maybe it's one one philosophy is connecting uh connecting similar values you know that mm -hmm. so there are several watercolor teachers out there that say oh, that's so important you got to connect shapes that are unrelated but same value you know that's one way of simplifying so you play with these ideas mm -hmm. and you problem solve yeah yeah, that's very true. And um, yeah, and as you were saying it, I'm thinking of other ways to simplify where maybe you're just doing different areas and wet and wet, and but you're you're still working on a specific area altogether. You're done with that. You work on another one. Um, yeah, and I think like you know really well how the experimentation and play they just end up looking more fresh than finished paintings so often. It's like sometimes plain that the paint pencil sketch looks better than the final inked work. And yeah. It's, it's like that. There's a freshness to it. <laughs> and it can be frightening too, can it? You can go, <laughs> yeah. oh man, that looks so great. How in the world am I ever going to replicate that? <laughs> yeah, you're not. That's the, that's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just keep playing, you know? It's like, yeah. I mean, I, I say play, but I mean, I also try to aim for, you know, problem solving is, is the way I like to put it. But it, it's discovery. Hmm. For me, it's just discovery. I think play is a good mental state to be in to problem solve. So yep. it's yep. it's almost yep. like you're doing something very purposeful, but the medium through which it happens is loose and and it feels good. You know, you're you're almost not there. It's just instinct, and you know maybe for some people it's more deliberate at the moment, very uh, self aware thought. Yeah. To me, it's usually I set the intention beforehand, and, and I just know what I want to work on, and then I kind of let go. Yeah. Let it happen. And I don't want people to think I'm saying, oh, don't sit down and paint a finished painting. No. Uh, you know, if, if you enjoy doing that and you love doing that, that's fine. But if you're frustrated, if you feel like you're stuck, you know, that's a rut you can get out of, um, I think, just by experimenting and get your sketchbook out. I mean, find things to, you know, on my Patreon, we talk about the draw anything mode which is like you just sit down literally draw mm, i love that. paint anything whatever is in front of you pull out a magazine you know whatever it is so yeah yeah it's it's yeah it's that understanding that it, it doesn't matter what it is all that matters is you do the thing uh i think yeah i had another yeah. point that was really uh Connected to what you said, and I forgot it. It'll come back later. Uh, but yeah, I think that that's great. That's great. Um, I see so, a question there that says, "I can't oh, yeah, seem to make the jump from playing around back to focusing on a painting." Yeah, yeah that's it, that's interesting. I was gonna say something about that, um, but you go ahead. I'll remember it now. I know what I wanted to say. Uh, yeah, uh, to me, uh, I treat even what I consider finished paintings as almost an experiment. Um, and I know you can't always do that, you know, especially if you're trying to paint something, you know, somebody wants you to paint, uh, something maybe, or you're really trying to fill a spot on your wall or you've got a, a contest you're going to enter. I don't know what the situation would be, but, uh, we're, we're lucky as watercolors because our work usually goes pretty fast. You know, we're not spending weeks on something like some oil painters do. So a lot of times you can crank two or three out. And one of the things I like to do is sit down. Okay, go ahead and pull out a sheet of paper. Maybe it's not my sketchbook this time. 
uh, tape it off and say this this could be a final painting but you you kind of divorce yourself from that that intent of uh if this doesn't work out you know there's there's that that quaking fear that mm -hmm. so many artists have it's like uh if i mess this up i'm gonna be so bummed you know it's gonna be wow. terrible it's just like no um expect it to go either way yeah Think in terms yeah. of a 50 50 and focus solely on what you're learning, you know, and what you're doing. And it's like, okay. And uh, the parts you don't like, uh, next time, what will you do different? The parts mm -hmm. you like. And a, a lot of times you'll end up with something, hey, you know, that's not bad. So uh, you can take the things that you're learning when you're playing and go for a full painting, but just, just kind of try to disconnect yourself from that that intense expectation. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just see so much of that, that intense angst and expectation of if this doesn't turn out, I'm just trash and I got to quit. <laughs> yeah. And I think if you learn to listen to what, what you want to do at the moment, uh, it's at some point you, you'll get it. You get in the role. Cause to me, if I practice, you know, I do a lot of play, small scale, experimenting with colors, techniques. At some point, I feel like I really want to do a, a big yes. painting, well thought out. But after I do a few well thought out paintings, even over the span of, uh, you know, a week or two, I'm exhausted sometimes. Now, I just want to yeah. open up like a large sheet and just play around with it. Once you yeah. get to learn to, to listen to yourself and what you actually need, it becomes much simpler. Divide really? and conquer. You do both. But yeah. And, and when you get that intense feeling and you will, I, th I think you will, like you said, when you're, when you're experimenting, when you're playing, you're going, you're going like, Oh, this is cool. I got to try this. Let's plan mm -hmm. out a painting. You should go for it. Those yeah, times and you'll probably come. use what you just did because you want to use it so much for. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. So it's definitely a lot about um, getting to know yourself and, and, allowing yourself i guess to to do what's good for yourself i mean that's people don't do enough of that getting yeah. some great questions over there yeah yeah if you see anything uh you can just start reading it and i'll put it on the screen um and is there i see one is there a problem solving tactic to take to overworked pieces hmm. that's an interesting question that's that's a good question it's one you have to think about um yeah for me, it's when I see something that looks overworked, I immediately try to define what is has made it look overworked. Mm -hmm. Again, that falls into the problem solving category. Uh, I could tell I overworked this. Why? Why is it? Did I put too much detail? Did I just uh, overbrush everything so it wasn't fresh looking anymore? Is it muddy colors? Uh, what is it? And that usually will tell you, you know, what to do next time or next. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know. To me, I'll be honest, my tactic is to stop and start a new piece. Um, I find it personally very hard to, especially if we're talking about fixing it on the spot. I find it very hard to do, I'll be honest. Yeah. Um, so sometimes it's almost like... Um, losing the battle to win the war. Uh, I'll just Very true. Either, either pause it. If I can fix something just using uh, opaque paint, paint over something, uh, that's a possibility. Sometimes, not always, usually not. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just chuck it up for... Uh, I I'll, agree. Uh, Fix, fixing it is... Yeah, fixing is very tough. I, um, however, I will add that uh, one tactic I use is to go ahead and complete the piece. Yeah. Uh, in yeah. other ways, go ahead and, and write it off as an experiment. Go ahead and write yeah. it off as a learning and and say, what else can I do with this painting? Now, if you're if you're if you're like passionate about an idea that you want to nail, you don't want to waste that time. That makes yeah. sense to start over. But uh, if you're in the learning process and you have the time, I, I always tell uh, my viewers to go ahead and finish, um, and consider it a study, mm -hmm. maybe some other part of it. Um, you know, if it's, if it's really that bad, you know, sometimes overworking is, is just, uh, it's not perfect, but it'll do. So yeah. yeah.
I love your your approach of deliberateness. So you, you actually try and ask yourself, what did I mess up here? Yeah. So that you can solve it for the next time. Right. And I think one thing I would say to me is almost don't quit because you're scared or displeased. Yes. Quit when you're bored. That's to me the guideline. I will give up quote unquote on a painting if I'm just bored with it, lost interest. Sure. Maybe I'll I'll set it aside. Maybe I'll try it out tomorrow if I feel like it. But 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 the thing to me is that that's a, it, to me it's a good test because if I'm bored with something, that's okay. But if I'm displeased, there's some kind of a strong emotion there. It's unsolved. So yeah, or yeah. or scared of you know making it even worse. That's not. I try not to quit when that happens. Yeah. Well, passion, passion, and interest in what you're working on is very important. So yeah, you're right on the money there. Um, you know, it, there's no rule. It's like uh, there's no rules really. It's like uh, the important part is is just to to try to move yourself forward, uh, usually by baby steps. And I think that's that's what I I see. You know, if you're if you're bored and you know what you're you're aiming for, and you just say, I gotta, I gotta start again. Okay, fine, do it. Mm -hmm. You know, but uh, it's, I don't know. It, uh, there are so many situational things. You, you make a great point, though. I try to make it all the time. Just boot the fear, yeah. boot the fear, yeah. because it doesn't mean you're trash if you mm -hmm. screw something up. Uh, you know, a lot of times us YouTubers, we try to show you all the best stuff um at least that's what what i do i, I don't know about you <laughs> yeah i was but... going to no i'm the same i was <laughs> going to to direct the question to you like how so let's say out of everything you paint how many times do you find yourself maybe looking at something saying darn i overworked it is it like a one in a few like, i wonder what's what's your ratio kind of yeah i um it it it's less uh so black and white for me is as sort of a scale mm -hmm. um you know i will save usually every painting uh everything um because i can go back and you know mess with it some and use it as a study or use it as scratch paper if nothing else but um it, it depends it's like oh so i may have that slight little area it's like oh, i wish that were fresher but mm -hmm. overall the painting is okay so we'll go with it. Um, so I get more of that. I get more of the little spots, the areas. Uh, I mean, occasionally I'll get a painting where the whole thing is just not really working. Uh, I've got a couple videos mm. where I actually felt like the, the paintings weren't working, but I went ahead. I've seen one of them at least. It. I remember yeah, one. Yeah. yeah. And I, I've, I've had you know, viewers tell me that is highly instructive to them. So mm -hmm. I try to put those in every now and then. Um, ratio, I, I don't know if I know. It happens, uh, though. Yeah. That's, I am yeah. doing more and more and more sketchbook work all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, just because I am not really a gallery artist. Mm -hmm. uh, I had aspirations to <laughs> do that once. Now I just enjoy the act of discovering you know, how to make each technique better, mm -hmm. how to use a color, how to use a brush and uh, just getting out and sketching. So, um, you know, I can find a little bit of overworking usually somewhere, everywhere. Occasionally I have a piece that's this fresh all across the board. Um, so I don't know. Um, you, it's fun you just it learn. Happens. Yeah, no, you learn right, over like... time what you can what you'll accept. Mm -hmm. I see artists, you know, who who turn out stuff that to me I'd go, oh, that's that's horribly overworked. Mm -hmm. um, so there are some stylistic uh, preferences in there too. Yeah. So yeah. sometimes I'll look at stuff that, and I don't have a good example, but I'll look at a painting, and at first glance I'm amazed. Wow. That's a great, everything is great. And then when I look at it with, you know, more accustomed eyes, I'm like, that's really overworked. I would consider this <laughs> overworked, but I've never, you know, that's the familiarity blindness thing. Yeah. I've, I've, it's the first time I'm looking at it. And I think that's the best measurement, honestly. It doesn't matter what I thought after 10 minutes of yeah. staring at it. Uh, it's really, first yeah. Impact, you know, means much that's more. That's really true. There, um, I, 
I love when I do more detailed, uh, more realistic pieces. Um, I do a lot of layering and I do a lot of glazing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and sometimes I can do that in a very tedious process. You know, um, an example would be a video I just did uh, a couple weeks ago with uh, two oxen pulling a cart. <clears throat> with a guy walking beside and um there are a lot of artists out there this kind of gets into a whole nother subject you know that feel like watercolor is full of rules mm -hmm. that would say you never layer i can think of one particular i won't name names one particular artist that that does youtube and says you should never layer mm -hmm. you should put every wash down exactly the way you intend it <clears throat> to be and i'm just I'm just calling BS on that. Yeah. Um, you know, so some people's definition of fresh and overworked is different than others. And mm -hmm. uh, it, it, you just have to kind of take it as it comes. Fresh and overworked are way more complex than just, you know, the result of putting things at the, right the first time or as dark or yep. as, you know, the color as opposed to yeah that that that's just kind of a, an arbitrary scale that you can invent of like okay how much did i glaze versus how much i got in one go um also wet and wet so <laughs> i could tell that artist yeah if you're doing different areas separately you're over totally overworking it i want you to pre-wet everything and then just work till it dries when it dries you're done and everything yeah. beyond that is overwork uh, yeah, every time someone yep. says should, it's um, it's yeah, there are no no there really are no rules. The more the more I learn, the more I understand this. It um, is true, and there there are some great uh, great contributors to that style. You know, I I call it the top down layer technique, mm -hmm. the Joseph's Bookvic technique. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Where everything is, and I think you kind of mirror some of that style too. Uh, yes. And I think it's 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 mass, it can be masterful, uh, and it's it's beautiful. Uh, but it's only one way to paint, oh. you know. Then you have the what I call the tile or puzzle sort of. You, you paint sections and you you work them together. It's usually a tighter style. Um, and then you can mix the two. So I mean, some artists so much when they work on their tiles. Some tiles are almost fully wet and wet, so it actually doesn't look, you know, more necessarily more detailed. It looks sharper because right. some things are more in focus. By the way, just on that point, if people who closely follow, I, I did this like a day ago or something. So this thing is it's a good example of me breaking away from what you just mentioned, top down, etc. This is the paper wet on both sides. This is the scoop. Everyone here is getting it. Um, I started mixing glycerin into the water to keep it wet for longer. Oh. And this has stayed wet for an hour almost. And I yeah. just and there's no such place. I made it up completely. Um, cool. I just started noticing a shape and I lifted and I charged and I kept taking and, and adding and taking and adding and ended up with this. And it's exploration. It's me trying to break away from preconceived nice. notions. It's I like exactly that. that. A very nice yeah. piece. Yeah. I love Thank the you. blue monochromatic uh, and feel here, to it also. On the table, I have two completely failed attempts of that same technique. To me, they're failed. <laughs> I mean, they're <laughs> totally <laughs> crooked. Uh, I have another one that's a little better than this one. Uh, it's too far to reach. But that's, yeah, that's no. But they it's told exactly you something. That. But they probably told you something. They probably told you something yeah. that, that you yeah. needed to do or wanted to do different. I expect a. A perceived regression whenever I'm doing that kind of a thing too. Yeah, it just yeah. makes sense. You're doing something completely foreign. Um, yeah, I just got a bit tired of being scared of wet and wet. So my way of countering it is to embrace it fully, try and see how much I can get away with just by sure. lifting it. And by the way, charging opaque paint, fully like wash, white wash straight into it to get back the highlights, you know, a little sure. outside the box. <laughs> Have you ever used the technique I have people ask me, and I <clears throat> I never do it, but where you completely wet the paper from the back. Yeah, that's how I did this one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe yeah. you said that, and I didn't hear it you. No, I didn't mention that. Uh, I I did do that as well as using glycerin with my water. 
And make that's it... supposed to keep it wet longer, is that right? Yeah, exactly. So if you use okay. glycerin, you're gonna it's uh, it's a vegetable based oil, if I, as as far as I know. Um, okay. It'll keep it wet longer, and if you want it to dry faster, you'll use something more like alcohol. Like I, I I've been told vodka. The, the cheapest kind that has no brand on it. Uh, for yeah. people who work in very cold conditions, uh, kind of the other way around. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. like uh, James Gurney does. He adds yeah. something, I forget, to his paint. To, yeah. when he, he he paints in the freezing cold. I don't know how he does that. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. It's tough. I did some sketches in, in, in Paris, <clears throat> and I was freezing my fingers off. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> So I, I had a problem, you know, paint dries fast. Now, no one says add glycerin. I had to actively search for that information. But as soon ah. as I understood, oh, I want the paint to last wet for longer. <clears throat> All I really need to do is, okay, I found a solution in five minutes. Five minutes afterwards, I already ordered it online. The next day it arrived, and, and now I can experiment with something completely new. Yeah. Um, does it slow down your your washes, the the spread of your washes? You know what's interesting? All? So sometimes when you bring water, it it's it's it stays. It doesn't move much. You okay. can spread it out, and if it's very wet, it's close to the wetness on paper, it will spread out. But this makes the paint immediately spread more. Um, so you have to be a little careful with that. Uh, it's not bad. It's not really hard to control, but but a bit. It's a bit yeah. more. It spreads a little loosely. Yeah. Does it um, does it leave any shine on your paper after it's dry? Not at all. But here's what I noticed. It so the dry curve doesn't just go linearly. It in the beginning it can dry fast, which is why I pre-wet both sides of the paper, almost like stretching, I guess. Yeah. But but the the real effect happens past the fifty percent. The last fifty percent dries so much slower. So that magical moment where you want to come back with some thick paint and you get these nice uh, mini spreads of the paint, it's still it's very controlled wet and wet. That stage lasts really long, hmm. like thirty minutes easy, and you can still rework. Um, interesting, week. interesting. Yeah, yeah I may have to experiment with that. Yeah, I recommend people try it. It's, it's fun. So for this small cup, like a normal uh, plastic cup, I put around, I guess, half a teaspoon of glue. It's it's a big quantity actually. It's not like a drop. You put okay. Like, you know, yeah, for the Mijello large bucket, I would put maybe two two teaspoons. Probably. Okay. Something like that, and, and I'm playing huh. around with it. There's no one has the answer. That's the thing, because no one explored it enough. That's that's what I'm doing now. So yeah, yeah. Like, what would it be like to just paint with glycerin as the medium is a question that just popped in my mind a minute ago huh. i don't yeah. know <laughs> it's not really liquid it's more it's not yeah. heavy it's somewhere a little to that you know it's a little more uh what do you i forgot the word for that um yeah viscous a little more yeah viscous. a little a little more viscous than water <clears throat> excuse me oh, hmm. okay. <laughs> very interesting that's that's finding discovering new things you know it's fun absolutely yeah i love that aspect and and i got a lot of it from your channel all of the more intuitive spontaneous paintings it's uh, it had a big influence on me that discovery that process of you're not exactly sure what's going to be there in some ways the thing you practice you become better at and if you practice reading what's going on on paper and being aware of it and actually looking at the paper, not just obsessing over the reference and where I got this thing wrong and that thing wrong. Yeah, yeah, it teaches you a lot. Um, it has. It's. I mean, it's. It's one of the things I love about uh, doing that is it's. It's taught me so much, and I think one of the things that I promote more than anything, the spontaneous painting is. It's so. Well, it can be it, you, any it's so low pressure. I was starting to say, but uh, any anybody can put pressure on themselves, uh, but it should be, and it, it is for me. It's like the nature of it is low pressure. Yeah, yeah it's whatever think, the person brings, but the nature of it is low pressure for sure. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Cool. Let's do another one. All right. I have 
let's take another pre-planned uh, question and we'll go back to the chat. I always, I need to do a warning with these streams because it's so much fun talking that I can barely, you know, pay attention to what's going on in the chat. So uh, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. more for the live streams that, yeah, <clears throat> so let's be here. Um, we have a question by Honey. Uh, that says struggling with figuring out which medium to focus on. Now, there's a reason I included this. There are so many watercolor, oil painting, pastels, color pencils, sculpture. How do I settle and just pick one thing to focus on? I don't mean for a long term. I mean during the day I will switch from watercolor and give up and switch to something else. And it's especially that last line that caught my attention. Hmm. Um, so to me, it almost feels like a fear of devoting yourself to one out of you know it could be tons of things perfection yeah anything that's that's interesting i've never had that question exactly like that that's mm -hmm. uh you know it sounds like uh to me and i don't want to insult this person but it sounds like to me they haven't figured out their goals yet um and that's a big part of it you know goals drive uh what you work on and you know where you spend your time if if you're if you're very young and a student and you're just trying to experience everything there's nothing wrong with what you're doing um but even then that that last part is, makes me suspect yeah. that there's more to it because if someone says i enjoy so many mediums and i find myself you know doing uh, three hours of this and i'll tell them just do it, you know, go with what you'll find a way to connect everything or to do everything the way you want to. Yeah. But it sounds more almost like escaping the every medium by using a different medium, you know. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's there are a lot of uh a lot of elements to that that could be the problem. There, you know, could be fe feeling like you have to do certain mediums. Uh, because they're expected of you, you know, students may go through that, uh, art yeah. students. A good point. Uh, or or people or maybe you know you have to be honest with yourself you know you have to say you know what i know i this would be a great medium to learn but in truth i'm not really very interested just mm -hmm. ditch it ditch it get rid of yeah. you know don't don't do yeah. it you, you don't have to so there's that element if that could be it it's yeah. it's like some it maybe it's just boredom maybe you get bored with doing one medium all the time. I don't know. I don't know what it is. So it could be also impatience, just, you know, yeah. continuing yeah. a bit till you see something you like that, that can take a while. That's right. I mean, uh, it, do you, you know, and do you really care whether uh, you master any medium or not? It, it's mm -hmm. not a sin to not do that. I mean, you know, the old saying, uh, Jack of all trades, master of none. No, but, uh, sometimes that's fine. That that's how you eventually you probably get to a point where you say, <clears throat> "Okay, you know, I know now. I, I've mm -hmm. I've spent all this time working on sculpture and pastels, and uh, I know now this is the one that I mm -hmm. want to really really master." So if it takes you a while to get there, there's no real you know, there's no real rules here. Yeah. However, if you're a student, if you're an art student. You may be getting pressure that way. Uh, mm -hmm. I know I did. So that's, that's a great that's hard. Point. That's hard. That's a, that's a hard point, question. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever I read, like, how do I settle and just pick one thing to focus on? What I'm hearing is, how do I stop doing the thing that I can't help but doing? And to yeah. me, it's a bit of a, you know, how yeah. can I stop doing something I really enjoy? How can, why would you want to stop? That's the question. Because yes. in your perception, maybe it's wrong to try out multiple mediums. And again, disregarding that last line that could be, you know, running away from uh, really dedicating yourself to something out of fear of failure or something like that. I mean, yeah. why would you stop doing something that you enjoy? I think uh, you're right. I think that last. It's another line is... should. It's another should. That how do I say? Because I should focus on one. I don't know. Right. Yeah, that last line I think uh, holds a lot of the key. Is well, you know, and and one aspect of that. Why do I switch? Uh, is is usually frustration. Is because you're not you're not obtaining the results that you want, and a lot of that is linked with the hard work of of mastering something. And it is hard work. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, 
um, and you just want to give up and go to something that maybe feels easier. So that could be a reason. There's, mm. there's all kinds of possibilities. I don't know. Um, but I would argue also about that hard work thing. Um, I think a lot of it is, and you'll probably agree with me to some extent, um, a lot of it is self-generated suffering. <laughs> because yes. actually, if if you... I don't really feel like I worked hard in watercolor so far. And I've been doing it for seven years or so. I yeah. don't remember really anything amounting to hard work. Yeah. Because and the hard work, to I think, from what I'm seeing, it comes from putting unnecessary either pressure on yourself or believing you have to do something a certain way instead of just looking at what I want. Like you said earlier, what do I want? Do I want to improve this aspect? Okay, I'll just do this. And it's not really hard with it. You know, that, you have to sit yeah. down and paint. You, you get the brush mileage, as they say, but it's not really hard work if you remove all mental pressure. That's real. That's a really great point. Um, yeah, hard work is probably a misnomer. Um, <clears throat> I think probably there is hard work. You just don't recognize it as hard work. Mm -hmm. or, um, or, by the way, there could be hard work in pockets. Maybe you have a project you need to deliver, and 90% yeah. of it was fantastic, but that 10% yeah. is a nightmare. And that's okay. That happens. But that's very um, that's very local issue in a way. That's true. I, I, I uh, ha have a big problem with people who talk a lot about talent mm. as being some really magical uh inborn thing that immediately makes them a great artist yeah. and uh one of the ways i'd like to describe talent i don't believe that first of all uh, i believe there's aptitude in certain areas but i believe that one of the things that's misidentified a lot is talent is intense interest interest to the point mm -hmm. where you're just mm -hmm. always so curious about something that your mind just just always goes there you know yeah. How did they do that? What did they use? How do I do it? Uh, you know, always looking for the answer is sometimes uh, misidentified as, as talent. And to somebody who didn't have that interest, that would seem like hard work. Yeah. You know, you spend hours pouring over uh, master artists and, and looking at their work and you go to galleries and, you know, you, you work on a drawing and it's like, you know, if you didn't have that interest, again, I think that sometimes that's misidentified as talent. Uh, those things might seem like hard work. And in reality, they can be. They can be hard work, you know. There's yeah. nothing wrong with enjoying work. So. Yeah, I, I couldn't have put it better, really. It's, it's, I find the same kind of thing. Um, I think, you know, talent, more like obsession and uh, lack of ability yes. to let go of the thing that drives you crazy. Why can't I do this? Why am I not able? To... It's exactly that. And you know, I obsession, heard this... obsession. It's a great way of putting it. Someone said, if like an alien would come to Earth and see a person's day, what it looks like, a person goes to work, maybe sits in front of the computer for eight hours, then gets up, leaves, goes home plays a video game maybe yeah. and in the video game it looks like you're working really hard you're thinking you're running around you're solving problems and if you do it vr and you actually have something on your face and you move around it looks like much harder work than when you sit in front of your computer but yeah most most odds are when you sit in front <laughs> of the computer maybe if you're doing a job you don't really like it was much harder work you're not engaged with it it's, yeah. it doesn't interest you in any way so, yeah, yeah it's, this is this is great. It's great discussion because I, I'm really glad you you called out that that term of hard work and and we unpack that a little bit because the, you know that does have a negative connotation yeah. to it. Yeah. Um, it doesn't for me because I don't think of that, but it, it's just it's just time and effort, yeah. you know. Yeah. And that you're right. I mean, that's just if it weren't great fun, if I didn't feel like I was having fun you know even along with the frustrations i wouldn't do it so yeah and again not to say there aren't moments in your career that that are just plain hard work that's okay um uh, but the the overall trend or the overall day-to-day -day is is not that's that's at least what i yeah think. yeah there's some great uh discussions in the chat people are really <clears throat> okay 
very interesting. Um, let's see if there's an interesting question there. I do have another one ready to go. Um, uh, what does that mean? How do I get Steve Mitchell to be the voice on my set? No. I have no clue what that means. It sounds to me like uh, some kind of a, I don't know, set nav sounds to me like a TV navigation. Thing. Yeah. Like, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. GPS. Car uh, navigation, satellite your, navigation. Uh, turn right. Uh, next <laughs> turn. <laughs> That's a great idea, actually. I'm sure AI can do it now. Uh, we will. Wouldn't we will that be talk, funny? Yeah. We will <laughs> <laughs> that for some applications, it would be hilarious. For others, yeah. I don't know. Uh, yeah, we'll have a bit of AI uh, maybe later. <laughs> uh, so, so let's do another. I don't know. That's a bit of a. We'll see. That's a bit of a. Maybe we'll skip to because this is a bit of a heavy one. I think. Um, let's see here. I'm just scrolling through them. Okay, let's do this. Let's do uh, Nicholas' question, uh, and th then we'll continue. And if you see anything again in the chat, feel free to stop me. And just okay. Uh, I struggle with motivation to sit down and paint. It's hard to make myself sit down, paint all the bad paintings that I need to do to improve my skill to the level where I'm painting good paintings. I know practice is the only way to achieve that, but sitting down to do that practice is hard when you know you'll be disappointed with the outcome. I've been stuck in this rut for years, and then I end up annoyed with myself because if I had just set and done, the work would have been uh, would have improved by now. Well, that ties into our last discussion. Exactly, we it? kind of covered that. Yeah, <coughs> that goes yeah. back, by the way, to your uh, why. You know. Yeah, yeah, it, uh, yeah. Um, well, first of all, I mean, to me, the obvious thing is attitude. You know, you got to take a little bit different attitude towards the practice of the work. I don't like the word practice. I like discovery better. Um, I think it's more fitting with art. You know, if you're if you're if you play a musical instrument, you know, yeah, it's practice. You got to do it over and over again. And there, uh, there's some of that in art, but it's discovery. Uh, to me, I, I'd almost rather practice than do a finished painting um, because I get so kind excited. If you had to give up one of them completely, you'd go probably with practice and playing. I would go with practice over uh, a finished painting it, just because because I out of practice, I get finished paintings all the time. So it's like I even get so excited by the discovery and the exploration. So I guess the, the analogy I would use is think of explorers, you know, the ones that, that, blaze trails and how they saw things and nobody ever saw i think it's a great analogy and discovered things that you know by you know think of scientists that that made discoveries uh they did a lot of tedious repetitive work but they were probably driven on by trying to find that thing you know it's they weren't focusing on oh okay here's another mix yeah. i gotta try you know, it's, yeah. it, it, you know, they, they were driven on by what they're trying to accomplish. Yeah. And, uh, you know, all I, all I can say is you have to put a more positive spin, positive attitude on it. Um, yeah. or if, you'll never get through it. You'll never do it as I think you're finding out as they're finding yeah. out. If even before you do it, you think to yourself, okay, I have a hundred, 200 bad paintings to go through. Instead, how about what's something fun I can try and do with water and paint today? Like, okay, even if you did one painting, it was bad. Take one aspect of it that was bad. And then ask yourself, like, how can I just play around with that idea and make it fun? So overwork, for example, which is something everyone deals with. And I would say it's not even necessarily overwork. I think at some point you have a mess on the paper. And you're not <laughs> sure what to make of that mess. Now, that mess can go... Either way, it's going to go yeah. and turn into a finish. I have so many of these paintings. They were <laughs> a mess, and then they end up being my top 10, make it to my top 10 list. Um, so you do one. It's a mess. And you ask yourself, okay, why is it? Did I finish it? Can I just complete it for now? And then why is it a mess? What did I mess up? Do I have tons of shapes where, where in, the, in the reference yeah. there's just a few very clear ones? I, as the viewer, I have no idea what to focus on. Okay, oh, focus. Okay, that's interesting. So how can I take this idea of focus and explore it a bit? 
maybe yeah. abstract it a bit and play yeah. around with you know different colors different values and seeing how i can you know what's what's a light um focal point looks against a dark background and vice versa it could yeah. be as easy as grabbing you know i have a black piece of paper here and i can just paint with you know just a gouache or any other opaque medium or opaque watercolor on it and see how i can you know make it look like a dark scene with a with a you know absolutely a, yeah, and, and a, a focus uh, to me relates directly to problem solving. Oh. Um, you know, identifying the problem and trying to solve it. Uh, I just see, uh, and this this particular person's question is is great in that respect. I just see this this try fail loop all mm -hmm. the time. I mean, mm -hmm. all the time, and it is bracketed by such fear. You know, and it's like, uh, I just want to sit down and do a great painting, you know, and mm -hmm. it's, I'm just afraid I won't. And they're always looking mm -hmm. ahead at the yeah. end result. Yeah. We're always looking ahead. Well, you have to enjoy the journey. You know, it's like when we were kids, you know, we in travel, you know, if you had, if your parents take you on an eight hour trip somewhere, it's like, oh. This, this trip is so boring. I just want to get to the beach, you know? Mm -hmm. I just want to get there. And um, when you get older and, you know, it's like, oh, excitement, road trip. I don't care where we're going. We're just going on a road trip, you know? I don't mm -hmm. know. Maybe that's an American thing. But uh, it it's like you've got to do that in art. You've got to jo enjoy the trip. And mm -hmm. along the way, you'll make discoveries, and that mm -hmm. will keep you coming back. At least it does me. Yeah. So yeah. there's a great, another great kind of golden nugget I picked up recently. Someone said, if a man points at the sky, everyone else looks at the finger and completely miss the sky itself. <laughs> it's it's so true. Um, <laughs> it's the things we focus on, and and that cycle you talk about: try, fail, try, fail. Just turn it into play, learn, play, learn. Yeah. You solve your yeah. problem. Um, yeah, I think there's a there's even a layer before that to that specific question of like why are you doing this, right? So if you're doing it to enjoy yourself, how can you enjoy yourself with the medium or any other medium, you know? That, and then you take it from there. But there is a path. But if you're focused on what you believe other people have conveyed or society or any kind of conditioning has conditioned you to think that's how I should do it. Um, you're not seeing the path that's right in front of you. It's, it's staring at you. It's mm. telling you, do this, come here, walk here. That's your, that's your way. Uh, so yeah, it's a right. little abstract, but it's actually very practical. I find. Right. Uh, yeah. No, great uh, points. Great points. Mike I can't a, argue with that. Mike has a good question, a bit different, so let's freshen it up. Uh, can you touch a bit on the business side of art? My goals include uh, exhibiting and selling my art. What is your experience on advice or advice? And I think we can take it either way because not everyone is. I don't. I'm not in galleries too, so it's, it's you know everyone takes a, a bit of a different approach. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Um, well, I, I don't. I don't do that. I don't exhibit. I, I, I want to actually, if I find the time, uh, wh what my interest would be, would be more in uh, entering individual pieces into shows, multi artist shows that suits my, uh, my style and time frame more, but I, I don't do like solo exhibits and I don't mm -hmm. really sell my art. I mean, I do, if somebody expresses a lot of interest, I, I'll entertain mm -hmm uh the idea of of selling them i have sold some pieces there's a lot of originals i don't want to sell you know mm -hmm. i have a hard time turning it so i don't know it's it's for one thing i know it's tough um you should uh you should subscribe to uh, uh our uh He's a publisher by the name of Eric Rhodes. Oh yeah, he's a great. Yeah, guy. he he's a he publishes uh, two or three magazines. I think uh, Plenier is one. Uh, another one is uh, there's some other art magazines. I can't remember the names of them. But he also Plenier is uh, the big one, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Plenier. He, he uh, interviews with uh, yeah. Z and uh, yeah. Right. Well, he does a a art business minute i think that's what it's mm -hmm. called podcast 
for our, and he's totally in that world. Um, you know, the becoming better known as an artist, selling your mm-hmm. art, selling prints, if you will. And I think it's a art, I think it's called Art Minute mm-hmm. podcast or something like that. Just look up Eric Rhodes podcast. He's got, I think he puts them on YouTube. He probably has some other place where they uh-huh. appear. <clears throat> That would be something. Um, mm-hmm. I know you have to spend a lot of time in promotion before you really get successful. Don't don't quit your day job, as they all say. If you're wanting to make a business out of painting, uh, exhibiting, and selling your art, don't make it. Don't quit your day job yet. Do it on the side. Do it as a a side hustle. And you have to spend a lot of time in promotion. You, you, you name is everything. Mm-hmm. People buy art, this this much I know, people buy oh. art as much for the artist and some emotional tie they have to it as they do yeah. the art, you know. The uh, most they important don't detail a, in the painting is the signature. Is the yeah, the they, they don't just buy a piece of art because it's great art. They might, but it's usually because <clears throat> that artist means something to them or the thing they painted, uh, I don't know. I, it's kind of hard to put into words, but you have to spend a lot of time promotion and promotion. And of course your work uh, yeah. is, has got to be really good. So that goes without saying. Yeah, um, I think one thing people have to recognize is 100% it's going to take time from creating. Um, I, yeah. I don't know. I don't know how long it can. I guess it can vary. And it's about a lot about who you know rather than what you know um Good point. but but it it does it does Good. take away there's no other it's a zero sum game you have only yep. as many hours a day uh, it's gonna take time for art for Good sure point some um, of the most successful artists aside from being good painters they paint all the time and they had someone manage them now yeah. that's a diff that's a difficult thing yeah. to, and i would say you're... Yeah, if you have like a good friend or a spouse or someone who's very business oriented, I actually yeah. think it's a good idea. You have to be careful going into it. If it's someone you, you know, obviously it has to be someone you trust, and the the, the terms uh, should be defined very clearly. But I think that's actually a good idea. Um, if someone's good at selling and communicating, and you're not, that's okay. You don't have to to turn your uh, mm-hmm. s- four level skill to 10 when you have the seven as an artist turned to nine is much yeah better um, yeah i mean you can try and climb that hill you don't have to um but yeah it definitely takes time from making art yeah and you got to be brutally um, honest you got to be brutally honest with yourself about your work mm-hmm. about whether anybody really wants it it's that's tough i mean mm-hmm. it's tough uh to not proceed under disillusionment you know um mm-hmm. <clears throat> it's only like a, a very small percentage of uh and, and i'm just trying to be real with you here you know the, who asked the question there's a very small percentage of those who can successfully do what you're talking about um yeah. it 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 just you know it it takes being very very honest uh not every year, but a lot of years, I try to go down to Sui S E W E, which is a a wildlife show mm-hmm. in Charleston, South Carolina. They have it every year, and uh, wildlife artists from all over the world and all over the country come there. I and see you, pictures. And, <clears throat> and if you want to be humbled, you go to a show like that. I mean, I walk through there, <laughs> and it's just and some of these people are just drop dead gorgeous painters i mean their their work Mm -hmm. is just absolutely fantastic and there's probably i would guess 75 percent of them are probably not making a living at that Mm -hmm. as good as all of them are it's i don't know i'm i am guessing a bit here but i just know it's that tough and uh it's a it's a it's a humbling experience yeah no, it, and and yeah um painting skills do not translate to business acumen it doesn't mean you can't have both right right but it's two different things 
that's yeah. just reality and it's yeah. okay yeah you that's a that's a great point you could be really good and it doesn't mean mm -hmm. you'll be able to sell your art it's... Mm -hmm. so the thing that teaches us is to some extent yes you need to be honest and and feel maybe good about selling your art uh, but past that point you have to understand that again it's mostly about you as a person um I can totally see a situation where you bump into the right person and they like you personality wise, you share some hobbies. They are collectors of art of some sort, and they just buy a bunch of art and it doesn't even have to be someone who's really uh, wealthy. It could be someone who, you know, owns their own business. And that's, yeah. that's pretty much most, uh, most people that make it and then are just save enough money and, or they have yeah. their own business. And, that's going to be a person that buys from you occasionally. And then you have 10 or 20 of those right. um, and, and you're set. And, and I would say, what about zooming out just a bit? Not just selling, because Mike said he, he would like to exhibit and sell his art. But how about people who want to turn their art into business, not necessarily by selling their paintings? Now, if you have some insight about that. Um, yeah, well, most of them uh do other things related to their art like workshops that's almost mm -hmm. a given um usually they travel a lot so you're you're gonna you know be in a lot of exhibitions you know and you will be in some that that don't do well you'll be in some that will um one of the things i have heard again uh, this is all kind of theoretical for me because I don't follow this business model, but one I thing I have heard is that you enter a lot of contests mm -hmm. um, and try to get your work recognized that way. That'll that's that'll a very do practical it. and good way. Yeah, I find. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and you'll earn if you know if you're really good, you'll you'll earn prizes. Um, mm -hmm. Some recognition. If, probably if it's watercolor, if it's watercolor, enter. Uh, or join some watercolor societies and, and be in their show every year, you know, or try to be in their show every year. Um, <clears throat> try to enter, you know, and what I would especially uh, recommend, Mike, because we can sit, sit here and, you know, theorize all day. But what I'd especially recommend is go to the types of shows you'd like to go to be successful and interview those people. Find out what it takes uh, from the people who are actually doing it. And they, you'll get all kinds of advice. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll get the real advice from the people that do it. Mm -hmm. And and I'll add to that one small thing. I think use whatever you've got. So um, I love communicating and I love talking to people and I love sharing my work. And it was always clear to me that it's going to be something along those lines. Um, whatever happens next with the art and whether it over time builds enough brand to sell more, uh, that's great. But that that's, you know, that's one of the things I really enjoy. I really don't enjoy commissions. So I'd much rather put all my effort into making, making money from the, the information I sell. Uh, I hate commissions communication and not do yeah. commissions at all. <laughs> I hate commissions. Yeah. I, I mean, I spent 35 years as an illustrator <laughs> doing what people wanted me to do. I'm I'm that's done with that. Yeah, I'm done. Rough. I am done with that. <laughs> yeah, and, and <clears throat> you know, one thing I'll say about that: if you're really just getting started and you do have opportunities to get commissions, um, if you can price your agony into into it, um, you just have to <laughs> at the end of it feel like okay, it was worth my time. Yeah, price yeah, all yeah. The, yeah. Just like <laughs> a lawsuit, you have to price <laughs> in your. <laughs> That's great. I need to write that down. Price your yeah. agony. That yeah. is that is excellent. Uh, most likely, <laughs> as a beginner, you won't have too much room to. And, and usually, most commissions are done for, I guess, family, friends, acquaintances. So uh, you have to factor that in. I do think it's a good thing to at least experience it, because some people may enjoy some aspects of it. Um, yeah. yeah. If you have an opportunity to make money from art in some way, I'd actually yeah. jump on it. See yeah. how you feel about it. You may discover something else, but I will go back to the point of like, it's who you know is important. Um, yeah, and, yeah. and I definitely want to build more connections within the watercolor world, but also general art world. Um, yeah. And outside of it, honestly, you know, there are some tangential 
things, you know, even music artists and, and all sorts of different scenes where art is appreciated. Um, that That's true. Even expect. That's um, true. Yeah. Yeah. The circles you travel in, the connections you make, all very yeah. important. It's, Just like the SEWE <clears throat> you mentioned, it's, it's a very, it's around wildlife, I guess. Is it around like conservation? Uh, no, just wildlife. I mean, there's aspects to, to it like that, but just, just wildlife. Appreciation, uh, kind of. And all the watercolor, all the, excuse me, all the artists there are in every medium you can imagine. And mm -hmm. their, their show will just absolutely, you know, humble you. It will just yeah. humble you. And what you realize going through there is like, this is probably true of, of every genre out there. I mean, if you, if you look at the American Watercolor Society, I think that's one of the largest uh, American one. Mm -hmm. uh, there's an, another one, the National Watercolor Society. Those two are the top. It's mm -hmm. it's tough to get in their show every year, but if you look at their the ones that are chosen, you know uh, that'll humble you. So mm -hmm. it's the the goals that you have to set are high, mm -hmm. but. It's doable. I mean, if you're really serious, talk to the people who are doing it yeah. and, uh, and interview them, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and, and be it's really okay honest. To... Sorry. Oh, I'm just going to say, and be really honest with yourself. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay to just paint. To... <laughs> you don't have to uh, try even to make yeah. a living out of it. That's fine. Yeah. I, I actually know a few people who balance it out spectacularly well. Uh, with their uh, professional life, and uh, they get the satisfaction, you know, from different areas. And I would say again, you can you can also you ask about a business, but you can go ahead and get a job in that is close to. So for me, I'm, uh, when I think about a, a few of the digital artists or artists that work as concept artists in uh, different studios for film, video games, whatever it is, to me that sounds even mm -hmm. more satisfying than doing commissions as an independent artist. Um, yeah. because you get some kind some level of control um in a, in a in a you know work environment that may feel freer than the the you know doing commissions and a lot of uh, different uh, people who do videos here on youtube you know work in studios and, yeah. and designers of sorts and and yeah. i think that's better than doing a, a, a different one that bores you uh even if it doesn't make you as much and by the way it can make close to i mean You'll, you'll earn a lot over the long run with mental health and, and happiness. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, you know, I'm kind of in a unique position. Well, not necessarily unique, but, you know, I'm sort of coasting into my senior years. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm 65. I'll, I'll be 66 next month. Um, and after a 35-year career in, in design and illustration, I was looking for something more enjoyable to coast mm -hmm. into those years. So uh, that's a that's probably an easier goal <laughs> than someone who's looking to build a business. <clears throat> so again, it, yeah, again, it's just, uh, I really reiterate, you got to talk to the people who are there, who are doing it, who are doing it well, and find out what their advice is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they'll have a lot of it, usually. Do you feel like uh, you doing um, a bit more communication and videos and all of that? That's also, I guess, an extension of your creativity and a thing you enjoy. Um, Definitely. With others and then reading the comments and, you know. Definitely. Um, you know, a lot of big YouTubers uh, have uh, people who shoot and edit their videos. I still do all that myself mm -hmm. and I plan to always do that. I'm trying to teach my wife to she she retired last year and helped me with that but i really did not realize how much i would enjoy video editing mm -hmm. yeah. that's really uh fun and it's kind of a nice break i love create, that aspect a as creative well. break from yeah. watercolor you know and drawing and and uh you know so <clears throat> yeah it i mean there there are a lot of I'm gonna try to start making pins. My my patrons know mm. that I'm doing that. The you know dip pin holders. Nice. So I do I do some woodworking and lathe and uh, I I make uh, like ballpoint pen, fountain pen kind of things. 
I'm trying to make those specifically for artists. I don't know whether I'll do much of that. I'm, I'm going to try it, but I've done some videos for my patrons showing them, you know, the, the prototyping process that I'm working through right now. So, I mean, creativity is everywhere and yeah, I, I thrive on it. So. Mm. Yeah. That's great. I, I find that aspect of uh, video editing to be again very creative too. Mm -hmm. Definitely woodwork and different and designing some. Even if you don't use really your hands to make something, but you maybe design it in a three D software, that's still that's all the same. <laughs> oh, I do. I know. I love that. Uh, I love that yeah. too. Yeah. Um, I love not seeing, having to do it for somebody. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> and seeing it go from a plan to a finished product is probably very satisfying as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a great feeling. Um, let's see. So there's there was another um, topic that a lot of people seem to struggle with, and it makes sense. Um, so everything around drawing, perspective, anatomy, things that are objectively, what I would say is they're objectively more time consuming in a way because if we're talking about perspective and anatomy, there is some uh, knowledge that that, that one uh, gains and <clears throat> gradually yeah. maybe eases into applying the knowledge. Yeah. But unlike painting, and the more direct you are with painting, the more you're just, I'm going to paint whatever I see and try and remove all other techniques and, and over complications, the right. more straightforward it is, but then when, and especially because you're looking at something, but as you get to, you know, all of these things, and I wrote down to myself, um, so it seems to me even like a matter of ambition and aspiration. If you really want to learn it, you will seek the right resources and, and devote enough time to it. Because yep. it, it yep. is a, a bit of a, a, a bit of a grind, I will say. Not necessarily even hard work, but grind. What are your That's thoughts on, on, on mastering these more complex, I guess, fields within it? Uh, well, it goes back, and I think you you're already touched on this. It goes back to uh, interest. You've got to have, <clears throat> I think, the interest to do it. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, portraits, uh, portraits uh, on YouTube. Uh, just people don't seem to be as interested in that kind of instruction, uh, at least. If I go it's by the harder. video views, because it's yeah. hard, yeah. Um, it's different. You know, you take a, a a portrait, and I guess this would probably apply to perspective too. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's that's that's more technical. Uh, anybody can do perspective if you just want to take the time to break down uh, the technicalities. Uh, portraits are harder because you got to study anatomy, and I, this goes for full body mm -hmm. anatomy as well. Um, and getting a likeness is we're much yeah. more sensitive when it comes to face. Right. You got to spend a lot of time drawing, but aside from that, you got to spend a lot of time breaking down anatomical proportions because in, in portraiture and figure drawing proportions are everything. Uh, they're just like the whole game right there. <clears throat> you know, and once you've mastered that, then you can kind of go on. But, uh, I don't, how to how to uh, attack the drudgery of it i don't know if if, if you really want to do it it's not drudgery it's you mm -hmm. fill sketchbooks you know with it that's what you do um you know and you and just like with watercolor in general you problem solve so i don't know if that's getting to the question you're asking but um <clears throat> it's it, it's just a, a different uh, a different approach, I think. Um, mm -hmm. Watercolor, well, not watercolor, landscape. Landscape or florals, for example, uh, some other subjects, they're more forgiving. You know, they don't, while proportion and scale is important mm -hmm. to a degree, they don't depend on it as much as figurative drawing and portraiture. So there's just that, that aspect. And uh it's 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 not if if it's something you really love and are intensely interested in it it's not going to be drudgery but you're going to yeah. go through just doing a lot of sketching yeah 
And it's like you said, you have to be honest again with yourself and what you want. To me, and mm -hmm. I wrote down also a, a, a bit of a harsh answer, but yeah, if it's something that, that you, makes you obsess over it enough, you will do it. Mm -hmm. And if you, if it's been years and you never really done it, that's okay. Maybe it's just yeah. not the thing, you know, it's, it's okay. And you can get very far with just yes. an observational approach. You can yeah. be really good at that. Yeah. Um, I wanted to be more <clears throat> whole as an artist. So I took a bit of a detour and studied a bit more of the deeper perspective and, yeah. and, and anatomy. But you really don't have to. It really depends on what what you want. If you can't live without it, you'll you'll end up doing it. Yeah. And if you could live without it for decades, maybe that's that's okay. That's where you you are. Yeah. Right. Well, in observational uh, work, as you say, is is a form of studying anatomy. Even still, uh, you you yeah. learn you learn by doing it over and over again. Even if it's just, uh, I don't necessarily mean, you know, you go to these these textbooks and, mm -hmm. you know, break down all the little anatomical parts. You can, but, uh, but for instance, the portraits, uh, I found out, um, you know, and I've worked on them for years. I, I tell the story that I was horrible at portraits. Mm -hmm. I just couldn't do them, you know, back in the day. And I, and this is, uh, sort of the, the thought process that a lot of people fall into. They just think, if you're a good artist, you should just be able to sit down and draw a mm. portrait, uh, with, uh, just because you're a good artist. And mm. that's just absolutely not true. Now, some artists will pick it up quicker than others, mm -hmm. but it's a, it is an observational thing, as you say, but what and how you observe is critical. So for instance, portraits are, are better learned from actual live subjects yeah because you yeah. see the dimension better um and what really started making a difference in my portraits was studying uh distances you mm -hmm. know from mm -hmm. where things lined up you know yeah. where things uh, the proportional and then realizing you know you get that off just a little bit and your portrait's not going to yeah. look right then the second thing that really advanced my portraits was the skull um mm -hmm. and where interesting yeah the skull is a map mm -hmm. so there are bony protrusions yeah in the skull that just sort of pinpoint you know cheekbones uh mm -hmm. brow ridge landmarks you, know, you can follow yeah and it's like why didn't i ever do this before and all of a sudden you know whenever i do a portrait i'm thinking that's a that's a double check that's mm -hmm. just a double check so and it, it actually makes it makes it easier so uh yeah you're absolutely right but about <clears throat> you can get far and probably some people can get way real far mm -hmm. just by drawing from observation but usually what they're observing are the things i'm mentioning mm -hmm. you know yep. if they get really good at it yeah and I think, so yeah, you can learn actually quite a bit, but from the experience of painting or drawing a lot of faces, portraits, people, um, about how the face is structured. And then I think very naturally people end up seeking the thing that's missing. So maybe you constantly place the mouth too low and people look a little yeah. horse-like, that can happen. Yeah. Um, so then when you recognize that issue, it's a very tactical knowledge that you can seek out, find, solve, continue with your painting carefree. Um, yeah. yeah. Can I do a shout out real quick? I see Shelly yeah, sure. Pryor fine art is in the oh. chat. Hey, I love your work, Let's Shelly. Let's highlight. Uh, is that the message or is there another one? Uh, no, recent. that's the one I saw. I Still learning been to there. edit by enjoying the learning curve. Thankfully, most people are patient with me. Yeah, that's cool. And and I wanted to say, I'm seeing uh, St. Inky also saying video editing is art. I edited for Disney for several years, but honestly, I hate doing it these days, yeah. which makes sense. <laughs> well, Shelly yeah. Shelly has a YouTube channel and she does excellent, excellent work. Yep, yep. I think there is no YouTube art channel I'm unfamiliar with at that point i you know sometimes so, something so funny i i i i hear a person's name i'll go over on youtube i'll search for it because i'm not i'm already subscribed 
to all of them <laughs> somehow. Yeah. yeah. I try to get around to these channels and comment, but I'm I don't I I miss some of them <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just yeah. to say hi and create community, you know. Yeah. Um, but you know, you're, there's more and more of them all the time. So thank <clears throat> you. <laughs> um, oh, you're welcome, Shelly. So let's do an interesting one. So I have, and by the way, you let me know if you have to dip out or anything like that. No, I'm, I'm good. My time's for... good. Good, good, good. Um, so let's see here. Um, RZA bot uh, asks, uh, this is interesting. So I struggle with motivation to draw with AI advancing so fast. I just don't see the point in being an artist. So I said, <laughs> we're going to have some AI later on. <laughs> so what are your thoughts on this? And uh, feel free, you know, to tell us if you're, um, yeah. Well, if in, you in, dove a bit into <laughs> this world, uh, how, familiar, yeah. how familiar are you? No, I I wouldn't worry about AI at all. It, it It's it, actually the biggest worry right now with artists uh, on AI is, is having their style stolen, which I, I don't even think that's a big deal because uh, AI art is programmed to be able to take styles and, and amalgamate them and create things you know and it can you know make it can make some really neat looking stuff but it's it's still very very limited and it's just not going to be able to to pull the the thought and creativity that you can uh put into work yourself this whole argument this entire argument happened Back in the '90s, when digital mm -hmm. art started becoming yeah, Photoshop prevalent, even. Yeah. yeah, Photoshop, uh, Painter, you know, all of the digital when uh, drawing tablets and this whole argument came out. It's like, oh, digital art, and and people went crazy. Artists went crazy for digital art, um, and they soon found out that the, the digital art couldn't do everything for the artists they still had to be artists mm -hmm. now ai is different in that it pulls you know from styles and um you know images that it finds across the board and can put things together but um so without you know artist input at all but so far uh, i could be wrong but so far the stylizations are very narrow mm -hmm. um and they sort of have a look that is almost getting to where it's easy to identify them. Mm -hmm. And if if you're interested at all in any kind of expression, uh, loose expression, uh, AI, AI art is is not doing real well at that. I've seen where it's it's recreated stuff in Van Gogh style and all that, but it, it has to take from very specific references in order to do that. And I know people say it's getting better and better and better, you know, every year. <clears throat> but so far, I'm not worried about it. It's it's not going to replace an actual artist, I don't think. Yeah. You know, and it it has to to steal ideas from other artists in order to do what it's it's doing. So yeah. there's still that there's still the the possibility to create new stuff that AI couldn't think of and really ai is turning into for some illustrators is turning into a really great reference tool yeah it's true um if, if i don't know if you're familiar later on with uh leoba bruckner's channel um i don't think so okay leoba bruckner she's a watercolorist but she does a lot of watercolor pencil combinations and she does these fanciful uh, sort of fantasy uh, or historically oriented portraits and she uses she's learning how to use ai for mm -hmm. reference mm -hmm. and then she takes that reference changes it you know makes it her own <laughs> so it's not a, a copy um which for things like faces and portraits that's got some possibilities proko uh, is talking a lot about ai mm -hmm. and, and yeah. they're embracing aspects of it so We'll see. I don't know. It's it's a little hard to say right now, but yeah. I'm not really afraid of it. So, yeah, I've been following the conversation for a while now, and I will admit, uh, in terms of you know um, 
copyright issues. I don't fully, I haven't done my full research. From what I gather, um, some aspects may be problematic, but the, if you do it right, the end result is no more of an infringement as I would just look at a bunch of photos and yeah. use them as very loose reference. Right. Um, AI I, is doing AI is doing exactly what artists have done yeah. for years. Amalgamate reference across all sorts of sources. The key is making it your own and making it a unique mm -hmm. creation. Copyright law in the United States states that something is still an original creation as long as it's transformative. transformative. It doesn't matter if you use other sources. Yeah. If you if it's transformative and you come up with something new, mm -hmm. uh, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah, it's not derivative. Um, right. Um, and so, so yeah, actually, over the last couple of days, I've started doing more serious research, and I downloaded Stable Diffusion, installed it, played around with it, because uh, I always want to speak from a place of knowledge and understanding. <clears throat> sure. It's, it's simultaneously amazing and much <laughs> worse than I imagined. Much worse. Yes. Yeah, I've been I've been doing a lot of experiments with it. So to <laughs> me, the application is more like okay, I have a, a few ideas for a comic book manga, manga style stories. Okay. And it's nice to have a picture of what the character looks like in mind, and then using uh, these these prompts to get a visualization, yeah. a possible visualization, even of some elements that are more basic. So like I have an idea for a medieval story, and I want to look at some shields and some you know stuff like that. Um, it's a good kind of generative tool to get some inspiration, but it's so limited and it's so it is it's so backwards in so many ways. You know, if you get so many <laughs> awkward details in there, and it's very hard to fix those. And it's yeah. just, just because when you look at these end products, actually, artists spent hours on playing around with the prompt editing out different areas and afterwards putting it in Photoshop and editing it digitally to make it yeah. look better. It's so far from I'm going to write something and get something perfect. Yeah. It's, it's hard. Yeah. To or like, uh, or like Leo Bruckner does do her own yeah. illustration by just using yes. it exactly. like photo reference. That's something yeah. I also thought of doing. I love painting cityscapes and, and the European kind of uh, style, high contrast. If I put in all those keywords, create a cityscape that does not exist. And I'm going to go on record and say that because people may, may make the assumption this is fully from imagination. But over the, the course of the next couple of months, I may play around with it and actually generate a few landscapes that don't exist anywhere and yeah. try and paint those. Yeah. Um, and, and one more even basic idea is people will always enjoy the art, the, the act of painting. So as long as people want to paint, especially people who teach. That's um, a good point. I think it's it's such a different experience. Even if you paint digitally, the, the whole idea that you can just sample a color instead of mixing it, it's it's completely different. Oh, uh, and, and people and this will has always happened. have interest in that physicality. Yeah, they, that's right. The whole digital art thing that I mentioned that kind of started in the '90s. This is what happened. You know, everybody just went all in for digital, and it just kind of got almost obsessive for a yeah. while. There's so much digital, and it was it was kind of disheartening. And then there was a backlash. There was a a return. It's like, oh, you know, a lot of people are we're, we're tired of this. And, and you had new generations of artists that really hadn't experienced uh, natural media as much, and they wanted to get back to that. Yeah. There was just something about putting your hands on a paintbrush or a pencil, mm -hmm. and and creating something. Um, that AI is never digital art didn't do it, and AI, while mm -hmm. digital art is has a very important place in illustration and uh and design, uh, it's never going to replace natural media. Yeah. I mean, it just never is, oh. and I think AI will be the same way. Uh, I haven't played with it as much as you. I, I played around with Mid Journey for a while, mm -hmm. and uh, it was the same way, it was like. This is hard. This is yeah. this is quirky. It's quirky, and I don't really, you know, I don't. <laughs> I didn't want to spend the time to try to make it successful. And to or, that point of it being challenging, actually, <clears throat> new jobs are gonna pop up, and yeah. of course, yeah. probably a certain section of uh, digital illustration designer work will be 
uh, out of basically out of jobs but it will be replaced by new jobs and and i think yeah, yeah. every person who loses their job can find their a new place that that you know either in the form of you're actually getting something that's more special made because i can i still cannot type draw this scene from this specific angle with this specific people it's just not going to work so yeah. every person in a way turns into a little art director that can create that's true. something if you're willing to put in the effort um and, very and, true and use this tool and maybe do some final touches very um, very true yeah again uh you should uh uh anybody out there interested in the subject should check out leo bruckner's channel how do you um spell <clears throat> Uh, L I O B A um, B R U C K N E R, I think. Okay. Um, I searched I, for something completely different earlier and I'm subscribed. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, she, uh, she has, you'll have to search for it. I don't know which one it was, but she did a great uh, video on how she used it as reference. And oh, wait, came I out my biggest art problem. That's the one about six months ago. It might be. I don't remember if that's the title or not. I'm going to put it in, the, <coughs> in the chat anyway. People can check it out if they want. But she created one. something new just by using AI for reference. And mm -hmm. uh, AI, like you were saying with landscapes, it just produced stuff that she would not be able to get anywhere else. Mm -hmm. You know, it's yeah. like. <clears throat> you know what? There will come a day when a machine, a robot, will paint with real oil paint, watercolor. That will happen. Sure. And even then, to me, that's just another artist. So I'm yeah. not really in competition with anyone. I'm, I'm right. doing my own thing. Um, it, it may make things a little harder. Maybe. Or maybe yeah. not. It can go either it, way. It, it may take the form of AI giving ai hands yeah you know, which by the way hands. could be very easy to program i think i think we're beyond the point of yeah. this being a very real possibility of it controlling watercolor like a freak machine that can just do everything <laughs> and get the washes right the first time oh i don't know about that man watercolor <laughs> is so intuitive and yeah, yeah. I, uh, who, who knows, knows? Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly um by the way uh let's see uh jill said she loves the uh scriptures you post at the end of your video oh thank you jill i'm glad <laughs> glad to hear that I, a lot of people enjoy those i appreciate you saying so uh so let's do i guess uh, so i have a, a bunch of questions and we kind of addressed <clears throat> most of them you know from one we got to another without even me uh, uh showing it on the screen uh so i think maybe we can um Maybe look for one or two more that are interesting. Um, so I actually have one. Well, let's go with that. Um, and if you, again, recognize something in the chat, let me know. Um, um, okay. Miss Beatrice says, I'm a beginner and have the desire to mostly work in abstract, but I struggle to understand how to compose abstract paintings. I tend to just completely go with my gut, which I think is good in some ways, as I'm still just learning how everything works. But I love to refine my compositional intentionality. And composition is something a little different. It's not something I'd claim to be a master of in any way. Um, so I'm curious to hear your take on maybe improving, which is relevant to lots of different styles. In yeah. this case, it's abstract, but yeah. Well, I think uh, I think you're on the right track, uh, first of all, because abstract is mostly about composition. Um, I mean, you know... <sighs> at least i think so but abstract that appeals to me is very compositional um I, I abstract can take on so many forms i'm not a big fan of chaotic just, i know exactly what you mean i'm just saying yeah chaotic yeah. abstract that just it when it's very no well focus. thought out and there are a few yeah. main elements i i sometimes can love it and i love things that maybe are semi just slightly semi abstract that have little hints towards representation but don't really represent anything that's kind of my favorite that's just taste but to me really strong uh abstracts have a lot of compositional strength and the best way 
I mean, there are compositional rules, and I, I think rules really kind of uh, kind of betray composition in some ways because uh, otherwise you, you're going to start putting together a formula every time. They're good to learn, you know, like the rule of thirds, uh, the golden mean, uh, those kind of things. Uh, those really just describe what good composition is. Um, the best way, though, I think to study composition is to just look and analyze a lot of artists mm -hmm. and their work. Um, look at their work. And I'm talking about realism mm -hmm. because <clears throat> one of the, I still remember uh, uh, exercise that we had to do, you know, way back in the day is turn a realistic piece into an abstract. And man, I was so confused. It was so, uh, how do I do this? I don't know what to do. But mm -hmm. you study the piece, you're, you may be simplifying, you may be finding the focal point, uh, but you're looking for the compositional strengths and you're totally divorcing yourself from the subject. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, I think, a way to study. And you'll start getting ideas. <clears throat> And then you just need to play. I don't know what your if your watercolor is your chosen medium. You just need to play with interesting brushstrokes, com combining brushstrokes with line, or mm -hmm. you know, trying different techniques. Um, I don't know. But it's it's kind of hard to know where to go from there. But it makes a lot there's of more play involved with with abstract and composition than just about mm -hmm. anything. I think. One artist that I really appreciate in that regard is Chan Chung Wei. Uh, he is so good at when you break down his paintings to the abstract level, it's very clever. You won't find, and again, these aren't rules to follow, it's just guidelines to experiment with. He nothing is of equal distance ever. It, vertically, horizontally, he's somehow able to place all of the little cabins in completely irregular distances and he has a way of pulling you in using different elements in the foreground and the the it's it's so interesting to see because i've i've been looking at a lot of his paintings uh, you might, that reminds me ago. yeah that reminds me a lot of <clears throat> of dean mitchell dean mitchell Lance. same same aspect of the genius composition yeah he's a great one to study if, if he while he's realistic or representational, I should say. Talking about uh, everything, he does, in every medium. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's there's such a design, it's such a, and I think that's the other word that goes hand in hand with abstract is design. That you're essentially looking at design. You know, I designed a lot of the design I did over the years was logos, mm -hmm. and most of that was abstract. So he has incredible design, and you can almost always while he has the buildings and whatnot, you can almost always see the abstract compositional strength in every one of his paintings. And he's probably one of the only artists that work in multiple mediums that I actually, it's not the watercolors that I like the most, uh, because usually I'll, I'll gravitate towards that. Uh, yeah. Even even uh, with artists like Sargent, I, you know, everything is brilliant, but the watercolors are the thing I love the most. But with him, I think it's the, I believe it's acrylics as well, right? He works three, like all, all the big three, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Yeah, I'm mostly um, familiar with the watercolors, but yeah. Yeah, there's right. there's there's a bit of everything there. I I love everything. I may be mistaken, but I do remember seeing a bunch of acrylics. I mean, um, yeah, it probably. I wouldn't yeah. be surprised. Yeah, definitely oils in there too. It's it's brilliant. Yeah. yeah, he he's very reminiscent of, and they've even compared him a lot to Andrew Wyeth. Yeah, Andrew Wyeth. Yeah, um, colors and kind of the mutedness yeah. of them. You can um, really pick out the abstract compositional design mm -hmm. nature and a lot of you know just completely forgetting mm -hmm. any representation or realism um in andrew wyeth stuff that, that's one of the things i love about it and mm -hmm. if you're interested again back to the the person's question if you're interested in abstract don't not look at mm. really good representational realism out there you know even mm -hmm. photorealism uh really wish i could think of the name of this one there's a uh 
artist who does photorealism. I mean, it's just really hyper photorealism. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's one his... on YouTube actually showing the processes. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't uh, know if that's the one you're talking about. There's I'm Thierry not... Duval, uh, the French mm. artist. I don't know. If that you... may be. Uh, no, the one I'm thinking of, I can't think of his name, but the what what's so great about the work, though, is not the realism, although you can ooh and all over that is the design. Mm -hmm. He puts, uh, like, he'll put toys and like one thing mm -hmm. that comes to mind is a gumball machine oh, I with know some toys is. and all this. Yeah, yeah. And it, immediately what struck me was not It's not Steve the Mill, realism. right? Steve Mill? No, I'm just throwing I don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> So the thing that struck you is the again the, the design the, the design. design that was immediately evident, even in abstract form, mm -hmm. and I, yeah. I immediately looked immediately looked past the realism, mm -hmm. and saw that design. This is cool. Yeah. At the end of the day, that's that's actually what satisfies the eye, and it's not just the shapes and where you place them; it's the colors and how they relate, and the the, op the options are yeah, um, right. You know how saturated they are, the temperature, where it's placed, how it communicates. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was just gonna do a real. Uh, Somebody in the comments also said Steve Mill. I don't that the name doesn't ring a bell, but because I was recommended to check out Steve Mill's work a while ago in a live stream, okay. and I still have the tab open because I'll just open a tab and have the art there to look at. Um, John says, uh, Steve, I noticed you posted high quality art content regularly for years. Do you ever get art block or burnout? Oh, yeah, of course. What do you do about it? Uh, spontaneous painting was a way, was actually mm. a way for me to break out of that back, back way back when I started. And I started that way before my channel. Mm -hmm. Um, I, you know, it's, it's, I've told this story dozens of times to viewers and whatnot, but. Uh, it was a way just, uh, I took my watercolor back to zero, uh, cause I'd been painting for pro, you know, for years watercolor and I felt like I was in a rut, not just subject wise, but, uh, the paint that I was using, the, the brushes, the style, uh, everything. I just felt like I, I was not getting the full benefit out of watercolor. And I actually had a neighbor that, uh, had splash. I'd never heard of splash before. That's a that's a annual. Although I think they've stopped publishing it. And the splash. Mm. Um. So she had a bunch of those, and I said, "Hey, can I borrow those? I've never seen those." And it's it's an annual that they put out every year for the best watercolors. And all of a sudden, I was like. Whoa, this is not the medium I thought it was. <laughs> and so I thought, you know, I, I I only learned maybe a fraction of what watercolor will do. So I just decided to take watercolor back to zero and teach myself all over again as if I'd never learned it. Mm -hmm. And spontaneous painting is the way I did. I just started playing with stuff and putting down colors. And um, I upgraded to better brushes, better paint. And, uh, you know, before long, it just became a game of trying to create a picture out of it. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so I forgot where we were going with that. Uh, oh, it was oh, the uh, rut. Yeah, art block, the rut, block art burnout. Block. Yeah. yeah, I think that's that, a great point. Um, yeah, it's if a you good feel way that, to you're probably You're probably not listening to yourself again and, and doing something that... You're not whether you, you aren't aware of a possibility of something else, yeah, or you think that's the only way to do it, yeah, yeah. Art, uh, there's I actually did a blog post on art block, and mm -hmm. there's a type of art one, block, actually. yeah, there's a that's type of art block that I think is not really art block, it's um, indecision for trying to come up with the perfect idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Rather than just sit down and painting anything, you feel like your idea is not worthy of mm -hmm. sitting down and doing it. This happens a lot. I see this a lot. Uh, or I hear this a lot, I should say. Yeah. Um, it, people will just, you know, they'll mull over. It's like, I, I've got a limited amount of time. I'm only going to sit down and do this one painting. You know, 
I don't want to just do some mm -hmm. nonsensical dumb thing that I spent five minutes thinking about. Sometimes that will get you out of your block. So do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I think one interesting place to search for an answer to that is um, in your close environment. You know, I walk around, it's part of my process without even thinking about it. I see something nice, I take a picture of it. And and the thing that that you take a picture of because it, it actually interests you or fascinates you, and it's something that's close to your environment, the neighborhood where I live, um, there is a different level of connection to it, I feel. Um, that yeah it's it's almost like so i don't know if you ever had that i definitely had that and not, not that long ago a couple of years ago because i've been doing it not for that long uh where when you follow tutorials all the time there is a deep sense of dissatisfaction uh, yeah. because ultimately you think that's the way to learn the techniques and everything but ultimately it's almost something you have to graduate out of that yes. doesn't mean you can no longer ever do it but you have to graduate from it go yes. back to what am I seeing around me? What do I enjoy? What do I want to express? Become worse with the technique, but become yeah. much, much better with communication, expression, passion. You know, that's a really that's a really great point. Um, one that should be made strongly. There are perpetual students yeah. out there <clears throat> because in some ways it's easier uh, to just always be in that mode. And, yeah. um, yeah, I think graduating is a good, good way to put it. Another uh, way I like to characterize it is let those, those teachers or those workshops, uh, be sign pointers saying, mm -hmm. go this way mm -hmm. or go that way, um, or try this, but mm -hmm. you've got to, you've got to go try it. You've yeah. got to go do it. Yeah on your own you know um oh. yeah absolutely i think it's a great way to recognize technical weaknesses um because when you're again basing it on someone else's painting you see all the places where you're lacking which is fine yeah. that's a very to me that's a very i aspire for it to be a very uh, unemotional thing um it's just True. okay my True. color matching is weak uh, everything looks good the drawing my drawing is better than the person who filmed the tutorial but my color mixing is weak and that's something i want to work on yeah um and then, then go yeah, work on it yeah that, <laughs> that's a that's a great way of putting it you know <laughs> it just points you in some direction um that's i think yeah. the, the magic of tutorials because you, you really do um it all comes out all your weaknesses are in front of you so easy to see uh whereas if you paint something you know a picture you took and everything which by the way i think is one of the best things because you you take part in every uh stage of the creation um, yeah very true uh, it's a little harder sometimes to notice these patterns um so yeah yeah um let's see if we have anything i had something i wanted to ask about so actually this is for me as well but i've seen some people ask uh, everything i paint seems like it's not saturated enough it's too great not vibrant enough uh, this is something I run into as well. So help. Huh. Um, yeah, I don't know if I'm the best one to answer that because I usually go the opposite way. Mm -hmm. I put down paint and I think it's too saturated and I like to I like to paint in pretty muted tones. Um, but you, you do know. reach a nice level of saturation as well. It's it's in the balance, I think. <clears throat> yeah, I, um, I think a lot of times it's just uh you're mixing you know over mixing usually kills saturation mm -hmm. uh you know people will get artists will get compliments in there whether they meant to or not and that will kill saturation mm -hmm. and just getting too many uh, I, what i see a lot anyway is just getting too many colors on mm -hmm. uh the page wet and wet uh not realizing what your colors are mm -hmm you know, mm -hmm. and how they're interacting and dulling themselves. Mm -hmm. the, the other thing is, is, is if you can, if you're using a student grade paint, yeah, they tend to be duller in yeah. appearance. Um, if you can ever afford to upgrade to an artist grade paint, the, the saturation and tinting strength is better. Uh, it's my opinion is that it's better to have a few 
yeah high quality colors than a lot of low color low, low mm -hmm. quality colors quantity of colors is not important not as important you can you can do really well with uh six eight no more than 12 colors um wow. and just build up better so uh, higher quality quality colors but just being aware of how your colors interact and mm -hmm. you know you, you take something like uh, uh Payne's gray for instance is used a lot by a lot of artists for shadows and that will kill mm -hmm. the intensity well neutral okay. tint well too of a lot because of colors. these colors have already within them three pigments usually or two yeah. pigments and right it's and so mess yeah, just realizing what it is is killing mm -hmm. intensity. Um, and I think there's something to be said about getting the right color. So once you are comfortable with them, for example, Pyrrol Scarlet, which I also hail as great saturation compared to other colors. Yeah, yeah. Actually, it's quite limited sometimes. And you need something like, a, what do you call these, opera uh, pink or these colors that are a bit hard oh. to mix. Unfortunately, in watercolor, sometimes they're a little harder to mix. Yeah, uh, because of the nature of the medium, you dilute it with water and all of that. True, true. Yeah. yeah, um, one of the things that if you're if you're trying to get intensity, uh, very bright or light colors is usually the easiest. Uh, the problem that a lot of artists have is when you get into the shadows. Mm -hmm. Um, now you know, in a lot of cases, that's fine, you know you don't mind the shadows are de-intensified, but if you're trying to retain intensity in the shadows, just look at the analogous colors and see if mm -hmm. there's something there. For instance, uh, you mentioned uh, pure scarlet, scarlet, a good shadow color that for that might be uh, quinacridone violet. Mm -hmm. So you're still yes. very intense. Yes. You're still very intense and you're mm -hmm. analogous on the color wheel. Mm -hmm. And it, it, complements it very well can deepen and shadow it mm -hmm. uh while maintaining high intensity mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah that's so, a, that's yeah. a good point that's a good point um because sometimes i look at some artists work and um you know i think sometimes i'm amazed at how they were able to preserve that saturation but i also think it's an illusion it's uh, to some degree because a lot of it is relational so if if I yeah. take a you know a, a acrylics paint tube with crimson red or vermilion something like that I'll put it on their painting the brightest color in their painting is going to look super low it's just yeah. that in relations in the context of the environment yeah yeah I think yeah that's, yeah, that's, that's right a lesson for myself I think that's right yeah. you, you almost need to build and structure everything according to your brightest color and then kind of build it and plan it right. but that's a bit more of an advanced concept i wouldn't expect for a beginner i would say just use and i've seen stan miller do it and it was great results just using yellow red and blue and not even mixing them together yeah so you're almost like oh this looks like a yellow i'll just use the pure yellow uh, he's a, he's he's a great example amazing. of limited limited color palettes oh yeah yeah and limited mixing sometimes it's, it's limited mixing that's right how he won't even mix uh, secondary colors he'll just use primary colors for everything in a given painting and it looks fantastic somehow. yeah and let the mixing happen on the paper that's yeah true. or even yes. just kind of not in, in some limited places yes yeah right right yeah, oh. yeah. very true it's funny how minimalism becomes the answer to stuff um very true yeah uh so i think I think we're good. Let's see if there's anything interesting in the chat, but I think uh, we can move. Uh, what time sure flies, doesn't up. it? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's, it went by real fast. It's too much fun. Gina uh, uh, mentions uh, she likes the bright colors of Mission Gold, which I know you have been uh, using at least for a while there. Yeah, I, I do get them out every now and then. I just have too many different <clears throat> palettes uh, but they're they're great paint yeah uh let's see my latest uh <laughs> experiment is Mar my married blue i'm, I'm actually oh doing a, they're nice they're nice <clears throat> yeah i'm doing a workshop for strathmore um mm -hmm. that's coming up in may and um they require me to use 
uh, any products carried by the parent company, which mm -hmm. yeah, the parent sense. company now is Dixon Ticonderoga. Okay. And they own my they own my Mary Blue among great some other... pencils too, if I'm not mistaken. Oh yeah. 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 Oh, that's fun. Uh but my Mary is good. There's a question. Um how does it feel to be inches away from greatness? Can you feel the chills down your spine? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel like I'm moments away from failure. No, not really. <laughs> not <really. clears throat> Shelly uh, says my heart is opera pink. Yep. Uh, it's a beautiful color. Yeah. So, you know, as much as I say the colors don't matter to some extent, sometimes... Uh, a good color can uh, save a lot of trouble. Yeah. A good pigment can save a lot of trouble. Yeah. If you don't mind the, the fugitiveness of opera pink. That true. Yeah. I, that to me, it's it's tough. Because if I do want to sell a painting or have the potential to sell it, I feel really yeah. bad about it. I, I don't use uh, any fugitives. Um, right. Yeah. Uh, I, I always... Too. Yeah, I always uh, use the advice that you should treat every painting, no matter what it was painted with, as though it were fugitive. You know, when you go to frame and hang it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, makes use, sense. that makes sense. Use UV glass if, and make sure you don't hang it in the sun. Yeah, that's, I think, even more important than the UV glass. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Oliver says, my two favorite artists on YouTube, you both are responsible for getting me through the worst of COVID. Steve, your spontaneous landscapes have helped me develop my style so much. Thank you, but oh, that's super. Oh, you're welcome. Very yeah, thank welcome. Thank you for being here. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, I think uh, uh, Robert asks Steve, do you have a, a YouTube channel? Yes. And the link, <laughs> I prepared a nice banner. So the link is going to be there. The first two links in the description box are going to be your channel and website, uh, not the blog, but the website. Uh, you also have a blog that I recommend uh, people definitely check yeah, out. Not very active on it, I, oh, but when funny. I have time, I like to write. There are some gems there. Uh, I, I'd much rather you be active only when you want to, and I know that everything there is really fun to read. Um, Thank you. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, John asks real quick, how do you pronounce Hake brush? So to me, it's Hake <laughs> because it's, uh, I guess, uh, <clears throat> Japanese. And, yeah. And, and, I, yeah. I say pronounce it however you want. <laughs> I hear hate. I hear hake the most. Yeah. I I know that that most people say that's wrong. Uh, I hear the two most correct is hockey or hockey, like hockey. the sport. Yeah. yeah. Hockey is apparently both of those are considered correct from some sources. I don't really care. I it, you know it's like I started saying hockey just because it's easy. Yeah. I hear hake, hake a lot. As a Japanese connoisseur, it is definitely hake, if it came from Japanese. Uh, they have a very uh, straightforward pronunciation. They don't even add the K at the end of the K. It's a hake. Uh, hake, <laughs> hake. Yeah. yeah. If you want to yeah. say hake, as far as I'm concerned, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. But use whatever you want. Uh, hake, John piece says, of cake. <laughs> yeah, that's a, good, a great way of remembering it, too. Uh, real quick, how do you pronounce hockey? Oh, yeah, we read that. Wait, I had another one. I just had, oh, yeah, yeah, St. Inky. Bring Reese next time, and thanks for the collab. <laughs> uh, it's been a while. So. Yeah, he's actually sitting over there. But... He's chilling. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I think we can wrap it up. Uh, Steve, if, uh, is there anything you want to promote? Obviously, uh, people should go check out your Patreon. Um, yeah, yeah. That, no, nothing special. Uh, I already mentioned the Strathmore uh uh, workshop coming in May. That's free. Yes, uh, that's a four. That'll be a four uh, episode workshop. You can sign up for it. Um, just go to Strathmore and so just it's easy. Just search for Strathmore workshops, and you'll mm -hmm. you'll find it. That's and uh, yeah, other than that, just YouTube and and Patreon right now. So yeah, we awesome. have we so have fun over there. Out. Check out the Patreon. Um, and of course, the YouTube channel. And I want to thank you so, so much for your time. I really, really appreciate it. It's been Oh, you're welcome. This fun. was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. And I love doing these. Uh, I do too. Not just answering uh, people's issues, but, uh, you know, just uh, talking art, watercolor, all of that good stuff. Yeah. It's 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 great to feel like you could, you're could you just walking next door to talk to a neighbor about shop, yes. you know? <laughs> Definitely. 
Uh, so we'll wrap it up. Thank you, everyone, so much. You can stay with me for a few more moments uh, once we end the, end, end the live stream. And we'll talk to you all again soon. Uh, so take care. <laughs> Bye.